Now in this video I'm going to build a uh, high gain antenna for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. There's uh, quite a few subscribers that have been asking for this for uh, some time, especially one built around uh, this kind of design here. And uh, this is a uh, high gain uh, antenna for 5 gigahertz. Uh, it works around uh, 8 dB, so it's got about 8 dB of gain. Now, the biggest problem with 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi is that it doesn't propagate well. You don't get much range with uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And uh, just for an example, uh, in my garden and here in the workshop, it's uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Because even taking my 5 gigahertz connection and... Uh, transferring that into the garden for people co to connect to is, is very difficult. Uh, you need uh, seriously high gain uh, antennas equipment to uh, get that signal to propagate. Um, I have for a while been musing on the idea of uh, putting a 5 gigahertz link here in the workshop just as a uh, project just uh, to see if I can do it but if I do do it I'm going to need some kind of dish on the roof of my workshop. There's no getting around that fact um, so in this video we're going to be building a uh, high gain 5 gigahertz uh, antenna uh, as I say this one this one's pretty nice it uh, works well um, if I am in the garden and I've got this connected to uh, a uh, 5 gigahertz compatible alpha card for instance I can pick up uh, my uh, 5 gigahertz signal from my uh, router inside my home but I don't want to show you how to uh, build this one although uh, if you uh, watch, carry on watching the video on the one that I'm going to show you how to build uh, you'll be able to build this one um, from the methods that I use in that one I'm just going to ramp this up a little bit to get about uh, 15 dB uh, of gain out of the one that we're going to build as I say this one is about 8 dB pretty nice but we're going to build one a little bit more powerful now the one that we're going to build in this video is a quad package of uh, one of these uh, basically we're going to take the elements of this and uh, times it by four and uh, hopefully we'll come out at the end of it with a uh, antenna a directional antenna that has around 15 db of gain now as i've already said this one's got about eight it'd be really really nice uh, you know if uh, you could build four of these and have uh, 8 dB times 4 but unfortunately it doesn't work like that and as I said if uh, you know I'm showing you how to build one of these I'm going to give you the measurements for this as well but uh, you could quite easily just uh, build uh, that uh, driven element there and these two parasitic elements and uh, then make a back reflector and you've got one of these but as I said we're going to make four of these now as you can see I've already marked out the elements on uh, this brass sheet here that I'm going to be cutting out to make this antenna. This is a 0.5mm brass sheet, Very, really really nice, it's strong enough that it's not easily bent but it's still nice that uh, 0.5 you can cut it out with a uh, decent heavy pair of scissors. But uh, we've got the main driven elements here and the measurements for the main driven elements are 29.98 millimeters by 22.12 millimeters now you can round these up or down uh, you can round this up to 30 millimeters and you can round this down to 22.1 millimeter it's just that if i don't put the actual measurements in there somebody will uh, pipe up and say those measurements are, aren't correct but these are the measurements and if you round this up and round this down you're not going to notice any difference uh, then we've got the first parasitic element here again it's a rectangle and that's 22 millimeter 22.02 millimeters by 16.02 millimeters and again you can round this down to 22 millimeters and 16 millimeters then we have the third parasitic element which is a circle and uh, that has a uh, diameter of 16 uh, millimeters again it should be 16.02 but uh, we'll just round that down 
to make it a lot easier at 16 millimeters and the back reflector is 75 millimeters by 100 millimeters so nice uh, simple numbers to work with again i'll include a pdf in the description that you can download it's got all these measurements in here and uh, also it'll be uh, done as artwork so if you wanted to etch this out onto a uh, copper clad pcb board you can do that as well now before I go ahead and start cutting these out it's much easier to drill the holes first so you're going to drill a hole in the center of these elements this is the main driven element and the easiest way to find the center is to do a cross like this here so what I'm going to do is just hole punch these and then drill them out we're going to be using uh, uh, M3 uh, spaces and everything to put all this together so you want the appropriate drill bit for that same uh, with the parasitic elements again we've got the center and the center here now we're going to have the feed here so we can connect uh, the active uh, part of our coax up and you can see down there how it's soldered in place um, this is four millimeters up from the bottom and then uh, we drill a uh, one millimeter hole there so we can fit the coax through so that is four millimeters up and then drill a little hole as i said i'm going to be drilling all the holes out first prior to me cutting them out then i'll cut them out and then i'll uh, get the uh, sanding board out and the digital calipers and get these as close to these measurements as i possibly can i like to use a sharpie the thickness of the sharpie just gives me if i uh, cut it to uh, the outside line of the sharpie then i've got about 0.5 of a millimeter of play uh, you know to come down to the actual measurements and i like to take that down with uh, a sanding board uh, this kind of brass is quite soft not as soft as copper but it's quite easy to work with and doesn't take that long at all you know uh, a little bit of time sanding them down so that's why i like to use a sharpie and just uh, cut it out using the outside edge and then use the sanding board to take it down to the inside edge and my measurements are pretty spot on with that again 5 gigahertz is a higher frequency it's not as forgiving if you are out with uh, your measurements but again you don't have to be too anal about it as i said you know um, rounding these numbers up or down you're perfectly fine you're not going to notice any difference when uh, you connect this up to something like an alpha card so i've been a little bit busy i've got all my uh, elements cut out the circles are cut out with a uh, a pair of scissors a heavy pair of scissors these uh, elements are cut out using my bandsaw um, but as I said 0.5 millimeter you can easily cut it out with a uh, heavy pair of scissors uh, the back reflector I managed to find a piece of one millimeter thick brass so I've decided to use that um, one millimeter is impossible to cut out with a pair of scissors you're going to need uh, either uh, a strong pair of uh, tin snips or a bandsaw to cut that out or you could use a dremel as well now as for laying it out on the back reflector all i've done is i spaced out the elements equally uh, into a quad package here and that's all you need to do i just got my elements got a ruler and you can see the kind of marks i've put on here i needed to find the center first of, first of all and i've uh, drilled a hole through there to connect with the coax and then i've got the holes here to uh, connect the uh, m3 uh, spaces up with and build on there with the elements themselves so pretty simple i mean the the reflector doesn't need to be exactly 100 millimeters um as i say i, I just get in that ballpark uh, a reflector needs to be a certain minimum but uh, the maximum you can have it as big as you want i mean uh, you can go really stupid it's not going to uh, make your antenna better in any way but uh, there is no cut off point for how big it needs to be but there does need to be a minimum so hopefully you can see there how i spaced it all out nice and equally on there now to connect all the four uh, elements together the main driven elements so we can uh, connect that up uh, with the coax i've got uh, some brass brazing rod here this is 0.5 millimeters and i've bent a piece uh, like this and i'm hoping that my measurements are going to be correct and i can connect this brass brazing rod up to uh, the uh, main driven elements these ones here on the antenna and again on the opposite side and connect my coax here through the center to feed them not sure if that's going to work yet but uh, hopefully it will but uh, you'll see that when i'm putting it together but these are all the uh, elements all cut out and ready to go and ready to be assembled 
Now that I've uh, cleaned up all the elements, got rid of the masking tape, we're going to start uh, putting this antenna together. Now, we're going to be using these M3 spacers. These are six millimeters in length, and all these measurements have been worked out uh, for the uh, main driven elements and the back reflector, the spacings, for a dielectric constant of air and uh, with a spacing of six millimeters from the main driven element to the back reflector. If you uh, change that in any way, then uh, you will change the measurements of the uh, driven elements themselves. But I also want to show you something, and uh, hopefully I can pick it up on camera without having to get the uh, macro lens. But um, this is where I've drilled so we can connect our uh, wire to, so we can connect our uh, antennas together in a quad package. But the drill bit that I've used here is a little bit blunt, not too blunt, but uh, I have used it a few times. And normally that would be a really bad thing because we've got all this burr that we uh, would need to get rid of. But because I'm going to be soldering this and uh, my, in fact I'll come from this side, my wire will go through there. Because I've got that little bit of burring on there, it's going to give a much greater surface area so the solder can flow in there and we'll get a much better connection uh, than uh, if it was just completely flat. So sometimes, you know, a blunt drill bit can really help you out in some situations. That's uh, something I do try and do. I say uh, drill bits that are getting to that point where uh, they're not too sharp anymore and uh, that's why I do it. Makes a little kind of solder cup, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd show you that. But um, I'm going to start constructing this. I'm uh, going to construct it uh, a little bit differently than I did this one here, because as you can see here on this one, I've got the nut on that side and the Phillips screw on that side. I want to change that around. I want to have the Phillips screw on this side with the nut on the bottom. I just think it'll be a little bit neater, that's all. Now that I've got the elements in place, I'm ready to start soldering uh, them all up to become basically fed by the same length of coax. So they're all become one element, but a quad package. Now I've got my little uh, connectors here that I already pre-bent and uh, you know measured. So they connect like you can see here. I've got a length of uh, PCB board here, which is probably about two millimeters just enough to lift it off the uh, back reflector so we're not making contact to ground I'm going to solder them on one at a time I've got some masking tape to hold it down nice and flat to the PCB board cut them off really close as well to the elements themselves so I'm hoping I can just flow solder into these and uh, get them uh, connected up as far as the uh, brass rod is concerned that I use I've used this for quite a long time now and I have measured this in the past and it is pretty close to 50 ohms off the top of my head I think it comes out around 56 57 ohms which is uh, close enough 1.5 millimeters as I've said really nice stuff to use in antenna building pretty cheap as well so I've got my iron turned up quite high because there's a lot of brass here and I'm kind of wishing I'd pre-tinned these uh, connectors now on the ends but uh, hopefully we'll get a good connection. Let's get some heat in there first. That's one done. I'm also conscious about melting the uh, little plastic spaces, but I think they'll be okay. So now when we remove the masking tape and the PCB board, we should have a nice space there off that back reflector. So I'm just going to do the same with the other one. I did off camera as well get a little bit more heat in there, get it to flow just a little bit better so we've got a nice connection but uh, hopefully you can see exactly what I've done there. And there we go, we've got them both soldered in place as well and soldering on camera is really really difficult because you have to solder so far away from your body but uh, yeah, it can do a bit of a neater job when you're not on camera, but uh, hopefully you can see there what we've achieved with those uh, feed lines going into each element. So now I'm going to carry on building the rest of the elements up and then we'll get the coax and we'll connect it at the back.
Now one thing I have noticed about these uh, little spacers is the threads on these are a little bit too long uh, to fit in the top, of, in, well basically into each other with these 6mm uh, uh, spacers here. So make sure you trim a little bit off otherwise you won't get them tightened down enough to uh, hold all the elements in place. Now I've prepared the uh, coax, we're using semi-rigid cable again and uh, I've got some heat shrink tubing on here so when we go through this hole we don't end up shorting the uh, centre connector to ground. I've also pre-tinned in a couple of places here and here and I've also pre-tinned the coax and what I'm going to do is connect that through the back. I had to make the hole a little bit bigger so it's about 2mm in diameter now to accommodate the heat shrink tubing. Well, basically I'm just going to solder that onto there and because this is only one millimeter thick brass as opposed to the uh, three millimeter thick or was it two millimeter thick that I used on one of the previous builds I can uh, get this to flow with my soldering iron no problem at all. Now the antenna is finished and uh, I think it's looking really really nice I'm really pleased how this particular one turned out well let's take it over onto the test bench and give it a test and see what we get on the network analyzer so now we're over on the test bench and here's the antenna under test on the setup here and it's looking pretty nice on the network analyzer now we're scanning from uh, 4.8 gigahertz here all the way up to 5.6 gigahertz here i'm zoomed in on this lovely lovely wide dip that you can see here the cursor is on uh, 5 gigahertz at the moment and if we scroll down with the cursor you can see that the peak of that dip is uh, 5.2 gigahertz there around 5.2 gigahertz and again across all the way to 5.4 gigahertz so a lovely deep and wide dip there I think the only um, thing I'd say about this antenna is I probably uh, look at uh, shaving half a millimeter off those driven elements just to try and shift this that way a little bit so we've got uh, the start of the 5 gigahertz here more into this pronounced dip but uh, even as it stands now a beautiful antenna it's going to work really well for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi now I've taken a quick look at the VSWR we can see here uh, in this dip around here we're getting 1.18 uh, to 1.2 there at 5.3 gigahertz all the way down to the peak of that dip we're getting almost perfect VSWR of 1 and then again coming up to 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi 1.2 really really nice VSWR it's going to work really nice for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi as I say I'd just like to shift it this way a little bit but that's me just being picky now as you saw on the network analyzer it's going to work perfect for you at 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi as I said I would like to shift it a little bit uh, uh, to one side and uh, get that peak drop right bang in the middle of around 5.5 uh, gigahertz there which is typically what Wi-Fi works at you can adjust it to work slightly higher but most people just keep it on default but uh, as you saw uh, with that uh, output and that VSWR really nice low VSWR for this so if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and uh, if you want to see more builds like this please consider subscribing and liking and sharing it does help uh, with the video algorithm this uh, small one here I'm going to ask any of my patrons if they would like this one uh, anybody who's interested in uh, the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi over on my patreons I'll uh, ship that single one off to them and uh, if you want to help build this channel then please consider uh, popping over to patreon it's much appreciated and uh, if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up comments or questions drop them below I'll do my best to answer them and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one